You're live, Polly. All right. Good morning. We're coming to you live from uh, South Mississippi, and uh, we're going we're gonna to try to fish for an hour or so, maybe a little longer, just hopefully on how everything holds up and how the fish are doing. And we are on a small lake in Mississippi. Uh, we kind of got thrown a curveball. We were going to do this on a on a state lake called Bogoma, which is outside just outside my hometown of Laurel, Mississippi. But they uh, they closed all the boat ramps because of the coronavirus deal. So so we kind of put us in a little bit of a pickle. But I think we'll have some fun. We're gonna we're gonna we're it's you know April 9th, So we're gonna we're probably gonna stay on the bank most of the time. Throw some top water and several different kinds of baits and hopefully we'll we'll learn something and we'll catch some fish. I'm sure there'll probably be a lot of small fish and maybe even some real big ones. But what we're going to do uh, is start with I'm going to I'm going to set this Garmin unit up to draw the contours on this lake. So all I got to do is go to Quick draw car contours and start recording. And we will, as we go along, we'll we'll start drawing the contours on this lake. Don't know, I don't know a whole bunch about this lake. Uh, so you know it's gonna kind of be a hit and miss deal, but you know, I've noticed just sitting here waiting to get started that there's some moss under the water growing. So, you know, that that's probably some good cover for the fish, but also uh, make might make it hard on bait choices, but to start off with, we I'm gonna get these power poles up. <laughs> well, if I'd hit the up button instead of the down, they'd probably come up. So here we go, man. We're gonna start off with a with a whopper plopper top water bait. You know, I don't know how big a fish are in this place. But this whopper plopper will usually wake one up. I'm throwing this on a uh, on one of my new signature brewing. Elias Legend series reels, which are going, they're going to be available probably in in about a month on uh, on Sportsman's Outfitters and Brewing Outdoors, and that's something I really need to tell y'all as we get started. You know, after the broadcast today, if you'll go, if you will like and share the the Brewing Outdoors page. Uh, www.brewingoutdoors.com or www.sportsmansoutfitters.com. I think go, that's going to be the Facebook pages. Go, the, to, the go, go to the Facebook pages right. and and uh, and like and share, and you will be registered into a drawing where we're actually going to give away about a thousand dollars worth of of stuff, you know, not not to one individual, but to several people. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities to win. I mean, you can win anything from one of my new reels to a pack of lures or whatever, but we're going to give away a lot of stuff. So you'll definitely want to do that. Let's see if we can. Golly. Oh, that's a good start. He smoked that thing. <laughs> I guess there are good ones in here. <laughs> Look at that gal. <laughs> she came unhinged on that top water bait, didn't she? Come over here, little gal. I'm throwing this on 30 pound braid, so. That's bass braid, but that's a good way to get started, I guess. <laughs> oh well, at least it wasn't the first cast. 
course, I don't believe in all that nonsense. I like to catch them. I don't care if it's the first cast or the thousandth cast. That's a pretty good fish to start with. We got a we got a nice morning. I mean, it's overcast. The wind's supposed to blow out of the north. But there you go. Three and a half, three and three quarter pounder, maybe, maybe four. I like getting started like that. What do you think? Y'all feel, you know, as you tune in and you want to ask any questions, just fire, fire away, because we're going to answer questions all day. Then, you know, anything about the past, or present, or future, just I'll share any kind of knowledge I got with you. Fish was in real shallow water. I guess they let me know right off they will bite a top water bait. <laughs> My old buddy Wes Morgan is on the on the camera on the phone and he with his ingenuity he got got us hooked up with a with a mic to his phone so hopefully we're gonna have some even in the wind we'll have some good audio don't know how long his battery will last but we're gonna fish till it goes dead you got a uh, person that wants to know do you tie directly to the whopper plopper or do you use a swivel snapper i tie directly to the rock whopper plopper uh i don't care much for swivels or snaps. Sometimes I'll, I'll put a uh, mono leader on there. I don't put a fluorocarbon leader on the top water plug because it'll make it kind of nose down on you. But uh, if I can get away with it, I tie straight, straight braid. Yeah, you know, like I said, you know, April is, uh, you know, it's shallow water time. That's all there is to it. That old wind's going to try to pick up on us pretty quick. What color braid do you prefer? I just like a, a greenish brown, you know, just anything that's kind of camo but one thing about most braid is it it's going to start u losing its color because you can fish it so long so i just keep a marker with me and and mark you know put a black mark take a black marker and just mark the two three or four feet up the line and you know and normally that'll do it Okay, well, we are on a little small lake in South Mississippi. We were going to go to a, a state managed lake uh, called Boghoma, just outside my hometown of Laurel, Mississippi. But as I said earlier, we, because of the, the corona deal, they've closed all the state ramps. And uh, so we were kind of stuck. We had this thing scheduled to do, and I thought, well, we'll get it done somewhere. And a good buddy of mine let me let me come out to this lake. So we're just going we're going to map this lake for him, and and we're going to see how many fish we can catch out of it. You prefer to fish the whopper flopper on calm water or choppy water? You know. I found that a kind of what's going on right now, this type of little breeze blowing on the water is probably better uh, and depending on what you got underneath. You know, like I said, we've got some moss, some moss growing in this shallow water. It's not topped out or anything, but but that helps, you know, and, and I'm sure there's still some fish spawning here with the water temperature 74, 75 degrees. Uh, some of them have spawned, 
and some of them are still spawning, but they're still going to be hanging around in shallow water. So we'll probably we'll probably fish shallow most of the time. But I like I like a little bit of a breeze on the water. Of course, you. What size whopper flopper is that you have? This is the next to the biggest one. I'm not sure on the numbers. I think it's a one. 115, 120, I don't know. It's not the big musky one, but it's the next one down. What's your go-to bait if you had a choice for shallow water in April? You know, some type of top water plug, like, like, this, like this whopper plopper or, or a, a walking type bait. Uh, a popping bait's really good. Uh, and, and I also like to throw you know, like, you know, Mans has got a new worm out called a Springer worm, which I, I like to rig wacky style and, and, uh, and go around the bank throwing that. Uh, it's, a, it's a real good lure. We're going gonna, we're gonna to show you about that during the, during the broadcast. But, uh, there, you know, when it comes to beating the bank, there's, you know, from a spinner bait to, to chatter bait, you know, there's so many choices. But there's nothing more exciting than watch one do what that one did just while it goes, blow up. And now this, you know, if this wind picks up too much, I'll probably have to go to a chatter bait or a spinner bait or some some type of bait under the water. And I, you know, another real good lure that I'll throw some today is a baby one minus, a man's baby one minus. It uh, it it can be an awesome bait, and it'll it'll probably come over the top of that moss. There's not going to be a whole lot of baits that I can throw that that will come over the top of the moss. And you know, and one neat thing about what we're doing today, yeah, you know, we're just we're just fishing. You know, so I mean, if I if I look at this live scope and and see a school of fish out there, and I and it and I can't go oh, where the oh, leak. Oh, that's a giant! <laughs> I'm gonna put the. Holy smoke! Golly! That, that was that was an awesome strike. He ain't gonna jump again. Man. Pour a little bit of drag. This reel's got such a smooth drag on it. 22 pound drag. That's a big fish. I didn't expect all this. That was a long fish. Come here. I don't, uh, stop that. Got a mouth full of treble hooks. <laughs> wow. That's pretty exciting, <laughs> you know. And it's—I uh, mean, right now it's looking like when they get after it, they're going to go ahead and get it. A lot of times they'll, you know, they'll boil it or miss it or or whatever, and I'll, I'll throw a little springer worm or something back in there on it. But right now it doesn't look like I'm going to have to. Man, she said. I'm going to get you. God, I stuck her. I restuck her. There we go. Well, <laughs> first two bites have been pretty handy. Boy, those are healthy fish. He manages his lake well. What an awesome fish. What an awesome blow up. Thank you, Lord. Ah, heck of a deal. What I was going to say, if they keep doing that, I <laughs> probably won't do it. But I mean, if I see a school of fish on this, on this live scope and I don't get any, I can't get them to bite, I, you know, I may throw a crappie jig out there and catch some crappie to eat. Because all we're doing is, I forgot to put my power poles down. All we're doing is fishing. Is that the stock hook on the popper popper or are you upsizing yeah, them? Yeah, I, I didn't upsize them, but I changed them to, to uh, Gamagatsu trebles, uh, heavy ones, heavier gauge. Uh, you got a 
question about your new reels. Can you give, give them more information about the new reel? Yes, this new reel. Let me, you know, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of explain about this reel and about brewing. I know a lot of people probably haven't heard, haven't heard about, heard the name brewing. Uh, you know, back in the late '70s, early '80s, somewhere in there, brewing had they had some really good rods out. Well, after that, that kind of went away, and and then the the thing that brewing does is is they take a real premium product and they find out, they research it find out uh, everything about it, where it's being made, the factories that make the premium stuff. You know, this isn't, this reel isn't made in China. This is, a, this is a really premium reel. And, you know, I didn't design the reel, but I, we tested, we've tested this reel for like over a year. We, we've been doing prototypes and stuff. And, and the main thing we want to do is make sure we put, oh, there's another one. I'll get all this. That's not as big. I'll probably have to quit fishing to talk. That's, that's probably a male bass there. Yeah. What speed reel is that? But this is a 7.3 to 1. We've got four models of this reel. I'm going to have to get some pliers. We've got, we've got a 5.3 to 1, which is basically a cranking reel. Oh, I don't want no two-minute penalty. Uh, it's funny how you get in that habit now. But uh, we've got the 5.3 five, 5 to 1 cranking reel. We've got a 6.2 to 1 reel, which is, to me, is a you know pretty versatile reel. You can throw... Uh, Square bills with it. You can throw medium diving crankbaits with it. That's what I like to do anyway. And I like to throw a spinnerbait on, on uh, especially a little bit bigger spinnerbait. I like to throw it on a lower gear ratio reel. But, and, and we've got the 7.3 to 1, which is, which is the one I'm using now, which I, is my favorite as far as gears, uh, gears go, uh, to be versatile and do everything. And then we've got an 8, eight one to 1 that, uh, that for ripping baits like you know, rattling baits and, and, and lipless crank baits and things like that, baby one minuses. But we'll, we'll probably use at least three of the reels today. But, you know, the, I guess the main thing you want to get out of this is this is, a, this is a premium reel at a very quality price. So, so when, they get, when they get out, you, you want to check them out. You, you, can, you can go to the Brewing Outdoors page and the, and the uh, Sportsman's Outfitters page, and and they'll be on there, and they'll tell you everything about them. But they are, they are awesome. I mean, just just awesome reels. I, I've been really impressed with them. And we're gonna be giving some away today. Yeah, actually, we are gonna give we are gonna give some away today. Uh, as we said earlier in the broadcast, be sure. Go, oh, Dad, go! They are liking that thing this morning. <laughs> Oh, don't get too quick on him with that braid. Let me put these power poles down. Isn't it awesome, these, the kind of equipment? You know, this. we've come so far in fishing, you know, with the power poles. I don't know that I could even fish without, without them anymore. But, ah, he pulled off. I was getting a little too hasty with him. But, you know, this... This new Garmin trolling motor, this force motor, I mean, it is so quiet and so easy to take in and out of the water. And, and I, we were fishing yesterday and I hit some stumps going actually too fast. And I can't believe how that shaft held up and everything. I mean, it's just a, all this equipment is just, I mean, the people, these companies are coming out with so much good new stuff. Martin wants to know how how did winning the Bassmasters Classic impact your fishing career? Well, you know, it definitely was was the biggest thing that kick-started my career. And I fortunately I 
I turned around and I, you know, I'd want to, the first year I fished BASS full time was in 79 and I, I won a, one of the BASS regular events on Lake Gaston. And, and then I won the classic in 82 and I won another regular event in, in 83. So it kind of, you know, I guess it let companies know that I wasn't just a lucky fluke one time, one time deal. But, uh, but it did definitely, I mean, that stays with you. I mean, you know, people refer to you as a Bassmasters Classic winner. I don't care what all you've accomplished and what you've done, but that's the main thing they remember. Paul, how do you like your Epic custom rods? That's another thing I need to talk about. I really, I really like them a lot. They have got, they have got such good actions and they are so, they are so precise on their actions. I'm throwing, I'm throwing this on a, uh, on a six foot nine inch medium medium uh, action rod it's got kind of a fast tip but but uh i can be real accurate with this with a with a shorter rod but but all their actions that's the most probably the most impressed thing that's that's impressed me the most about the fx custom rods is is their balance and and the way the way the actions do exactly what they what they're supposed to do for the type of bait that you're fishing. Uh, why are you using braid instead of heavy mono with the plopper? I just whenever I can get away with braid, I like it. Now it's going to cost me a few fish like that one that one there that was about a three pound fish and and it pulled off. But if I'd been in a tournament, I would have probably taken my time a little a little more with that fish. But you know, and, and naturally, if I was tournament fishing, I would have one rigged up on, on mono. And if I felt like I was losing, you know, if I lost a few fish and I felt like it was because of the braid, I would, I would go to the mono. Ooh. Oh, that's time for that worm right there. Let's get back on him with that worm. He boiled it. Well, I didn't stop myself, so I probably going to get moss on that thing. That could have been a bedding fish. Should have had that up here and ready to go. Yeah, I got moss on it. I got one down there with a weedless hook that I'm probably gonna need to throw. As we get on into the broadcast, I, I wanna tell you about this new Springer worm. This worm, has got more action than any wacky rig nose hook bait I've ever used, the way it undulates and swims down to the bottom. But the, the neatest thing about this worm is it's got a spring all the way through it from one end to the other. And it, this thing is just, you see how I'm just holding that hook there and you see how it's shaking. Well, it just it just quivers all the way down to the bottom. And, and I mean, I've, I've caught a ton of fish on it. You, it's you know you can go to the Man's Bait Company website and and find out about it. But but uh, it you'll see during throughout the day I'll be picking this thing up and I'm sure I'll catch some fish on it. But it it's just an awesome bait. But right now I'm gonna get back to that whopper plop. Okay, I think we got some people that came in late that want to know how do you win one of the reels? What's the, how do you get in for the drawing pole? Okay, what we're doing, as soon as this broadcast is over, if you'll go, if you'll go to the Brewing Outdoors Facebook page and the Sportsman or the Sportsman's Outfitters Facebook page and like and share, that will enter you into the drawing. 
and so uh, once you get entered into the drawing, you're you're good, and we'll and we'll definitely let everybody know who won and what they won. Uh, I think we're gonna let the winners know tomorrow. Yeah. So you know, be sure and get on there and like and share because I mean there's some you know. You're, Tag your friends. Yep. Tag your friends. Tune in. Yeah, because this is gonna be a it's gonna be an awesome deal. I think they got a crossbow to give away. They got a crossbow, they got a, a, an angler fishing bow for, for like for carp and bar and stuff. And uh, a couple of your reels, right? Yeah, we're gonna give away some reels. We're gonna give away some, some lures, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's gonna be a neat little deal. Man, this thing, everything looks good because, I mean, sun's not up. You can't see what I'm seeing as far as this moss is. And there, I'm sure that's the fish are around it. What's the water temperature again? The water temperature is 74 degrees. There's a little guy. He just came up, he wasn't that little. He just came up there and sucked it in. See if I can get that one in without losing him. Little guy. I thought he was smaller than that. See, he's barely, yeah, that fish was barely hooked. That's a little male bass, probably garden. Take advantage of this low light. I can't see well enough to see if there's any beds. What sunglasses and lenses do you have on, Paul? I have got prescription Costa zone and I I've got the I believe these are, <laughs> these are the blue mirror. I've got two pair, but these are the blue mirror which uh, are is really a little bit uh, there's a bed right there. I think Which is a little bit dark for for right now, but uh, on the on a bright sunny day like we're gonna have today, that's for, to me that's really the only way to go. Let's see if that got a bed on. That's a tire actually. It looks like it's such low light I can't tell. But I see a log and a stump. And I got this open hook, wacky. So. I guess that tire made it look like it was a bed. Sure looks cleaned off though. How you liking your Garmin trolling motor? I love that thing. That is an awesome, awesome, awesome trolling motor. I have a, I put it to the test several times, but yesterday I know I put it to the test because I know what I've used in the past would have had a broke shaft yesterday. It's the quietest motor I've ever been in. Yeah, it is. It's very quiet. Better go aggressive while these fish are being aggressive. Uh, I had a gentleman try to go ask uh, if you prefer a straight standard retrieve with your flop and flop or stop and go? I usually just straight retrieve it. Uh, you know, and it again, that kind of that kind of depends on uh, on the situation. You know, if I was if I was around hydrilla and milfoil and stuff like that, uh, there'd be some places like I might stop it by some clunk. Oh, cow, what a, what a strike. <laughs> oh, man. If you don't pull off, it'll be a miracle. These, these male bass are really aggressive. They've never seen this thing before, probably. Yeah, it all up in the side of the head. Well, it ain't small the fish as I thought it was. Yeah, the hook just fell out right there. Two, two and a quarter pounder. 
What's the length of the rod you're throwing? This is a 6'9", medium. FX Custom Rod. Sun's getting on out. That's a good thing and a bad thing. We probably have to go to a different type bait. You never know though. Water temperature where it is. like a bed right there, right there. <laughs> oh, that little old buck bass could not stand the fact that that was coming over that bed. Cause <laughs> That's called calling your shot there. What's your favorite color whopper plopper? I'd have to say bone. I usually throw bone or black most of the time. Uh, uh, there's, there's one called, I think monkey's butt is a color that I've thrown and done pretty well on, but I really don't, I don't mix up the colors that much. What's your favorite bait on Raven? <sighs> well, my favorite bait on Raven is a man's 20 plus because I, I love fishing Rayburn when the fish are out. But if I was gonna, now I've gone to some fall events there and, and, uh, and done real well on the whopper plopper. But if I had to say a favorite bait for Rayburn for me would be a crankbait. Now I've done so well so many times on a man's 20 plus on Rayburn that that, that Definitely would would be my choice. How do you like your bass cat? I love my bass cat. This is my fifth one, I believe, fourth or fifth one, and and uh, they are uh, they are just awesome boats. I mean, this boat this it's what amazes me. This is a big old boat. This this is the uh, the Lynx model. This is the second Lynx I've had. I've run a Cougar and I've and I've run a Puma. Uh, but this I went to the I went back to this model because when I looked at the schedule that we were supposed to fish this year, of course Corona's messed that up. But we were going to some big, pretty big water, Champlain and and uh, back to that Wisconsin lake that got so rough on us. So uh, I decided to go back with the links. But this boat goes in. To be a big boat, and I mean, it's got a tremendous amount of storage, but it goes in such shallow water. I mean, we we had this boat in left a foot of water yesterday, maybe even less. And uh, I've, I've been really impressed. I guess that's because of the width of the boat. Of course, you know, Rick Pierce is he's, it's a he's a boat designer. That's what he does. He he. Uh, He's done it all his life, and he's he's designed a fine boat here. But all all their bottles, you don't hardly you very seldom run into a bass cat owner that's not bragging about his boat. Man, the sun getting up. I'm starting to really see clumps of this underwater moss. It's like a brown looking some type of deal. I don't know. I've never really seen that kind of grass. What tips can you give a new tournament fisherman that's just starting out doing that now? Well, you know, probably the most important tip as far as tournament fishing goes is you got to block everybody, everybody that's in that tournament out of your mind. And you got to say, I'm in this, I'm in this tournament fishing against the fish. If I figure the fish out, I'm gonna do well in this tournament. So, you know, to me, that's the most important thing. You've got to be mentally, golly. You, 
you've got to be mentally ready at all times. And you know, and I, I don't really excel at a lot of the, a lot of the things it takes, especially to be a tournament fisherman in the, in the present. Uh, you know, I've really been impressed with these younger guys on the way they just pick up and fish the moment. And, and, and that, I mean, to me, that's the kind of stuff you've got to do. Uh, you, you know, I, and, I, and that's a lot of times I fail at that. But, you know, my advice would, would always be, you know, you're fishing against the bass and, and keep an open mind the whole day. Don't get yourself locked into a situation where you, where you, where you handcuff yourself and, and you, you, you're practically willing it to happen instead of, instead of making it happen. You know, and with the major league fishing format, it you know I had to learn the I'm having to learn the game all over again because it it's totally different. I mean, if I was if I was fishing a major league fishing event, gosh dang, I would be able to catch that fish. That's crazy. If I was fishing a major league fishing event right now. I mean, I would stick with this top water as long as I could, but I'd have to—I know that sooner or later I've got to—I've uh, got to get something else going. Once that sun gets up, I gotta—I gotta be able to move around. Cause I'm gonna tell you something, these boys. Oop, I got a mess there. I can't believe I didn't fix that. I don't want to hook a fish there. I did that yesterday and forgot to fix it. <laughs> but uh, you don't want to—you can't. You can't go to sleep <laughs> in major league fishing. I promise you. You know when it's a five fish limit, you can uh, you got some room to spare and you can do different things. Uh, but when it and that two and a half hour period in major league fishing flies by, and and it it'll blow your mind. Last year minutes you were getting behind if you wasn't averaging. Now you might catch four or five in a row and then go 15 minutes without catching one, but if you weren't averaging a fish every every 12 minutes, you, you were getting behind. And now, I mean, that's, that's a statement right there. Can y'all can y'all still hear me? How about it? I don't know. I had the stream on now. Do not disturb, but it rang two minutes ago. It said Michael Jenkins said Jeff, he could still hear you. Okay. Boy, this moss is coming almost all the way up to the surface right here. Catch us a bigger knot in here. Okay, everybody says they can still hear you, so we good to go on that. I just can't monitor it on my headset, so I'm trusting that everybody can hear this. Y'all, if we lose our sound, please let us know. You have to understand what I'm working with here. <laughs> now, this bite's liable to go away here pretty quick. You see the last few just kind of slapped at it. We'll come back through there with, with something different. Okay. All right. We can do that. Uh, 
Okay, I am using a 7.3 to 1 Bruin Elias Legend Series reel with a 6 foot 8 inch FX custom rod with 30 pound bass braid. Now bass braid is, a, I use white peacock fluorocarbon and it's made by a company called Balsix, B-A-L-S-A-X. It's made in Europe. And uh, you, can, you can actually find this line on Balsix USA's website. But it's 30 pound braid tied directly to the, to the whopper plopper. And I think the Possibly the whopper plopper deal is fixing to go away, which is fine with me, but it sure was exciting for a little bit. Why a whopper plopper and not a buzz bait? And I think somebody asked about a buzzing frog. What's your, why do you like the... Okay, the question, the question is why a whopper plopper instead of a, some other type top water bait or frog type bait uh, when I can get away with it you know a lot of you miss a lot of strikes on a on a frog oh man you don't miss them when they hit it that hard but that's a little buck bass but uh if I can get away with using these big treble hooks I'm gonna do it uh, you know, I am not. All right, I'll let you go. Just calm down. I am not a big time frog fisherman. Uh, I I throw it when I have to, and it is exciting. You know, I mean, I and I've gotten to where I throw it more and more. I need to just keep these pliers on me the way they're getting this thing. But uh, I'm. When something's working, <laughs> I stick with it. But, uh, you know, I'm sure I could catch some of these fish on a frog. And, you know, but uh, this is just kind of my, my lure of choice right now because there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, number one is I thought possibly these fish had never seen one of these before, which they're acting like they haven't. Golly. been trying to look to see if a big female swims up under one, but it looks like it's just mainly buck bass garden now. Oh, long buck bass there. You know, I getting that one off, I had several questions about uh, when you were throwing your Springer one. That's a Bruin spinning reel, so you might want to... Okay, that is not a Bruin spinning reel. The question was, was I using a Bruin spinning reel on the, uh, on the man Springer worm? And no, I was not, because we, we are in the process of, of developing, of, of testing and getting ready to, to have some spinning reels, but it's going to be a while. So, so we're, uh, that's, not a, that's not a Bruin spinning reel that is a fx uh, fx custom rod seven foot four inch medium heavy medium heavy spinning rod that uh or that that i've got on there that i really like it's really balanced one bolt it right there Throw that thing again and see. I've even caught them on this worm, just kind of pulling it on top, just because it ekes back and forth so much. It's got a lot of, a lot of good action on top, but it's, it's going to be hard to throw this worm in this moss.
What's the coldest water you would throw a top water in? I tell you, I we used to friends of mine when we were coming up and, and learning about fishing and stuff when the buzz baits first came out and we when the water temperature got 52 degrees we would start throwing a buzz bait and everybody thinks that's cold but the first the first BASS tournament I won on Lake Gaston I won it on a buzz bait and the water temperature was 54 degrees and, and so believe me they'll bite it now you're not going to get and they're not, you're not going to get as many bites, but usually the bites you get are, pre, are, are pretty, pretty good ones. I got I forgot to tighten that thing down. Uh, I am using a fluorocarbon 10-pound uh, test leader. Did I put my poles down or up? Uh, I'm using a 10-pound white peacock fluorocarbon leader about six to eight feet long. Sure, we'll be able to catch some fish out away from the bank. Okay, so the person was asking why you're working the wacky rig so fast. Uh, but I, I, the question is, why am I working this wacky rig so fast? And I, the reason is because of this this moss that's on the bottom. I've got an open hook on this wacky rig, and uh, even with a weedless weedless hook the, the moss is going to goo all up all up on the knot and the, the worm anyway so that's why I'm having to bring it and, that, and that's why I'm not getting any bites too probably but uh, but the neat thing about this worm and hopefully as we go along start when we get off the top water bite is the number of fish you can catch on one worm I've caught up to 16 fish on one worm on this on this uh, springer worm because of that spring, and uh, it's a uh, you know, and that's where it, that to me, besides the action of the worm, that's where it excels because you'd go through three or four packs of regular plastic stick worms uh, or even more. God. Lee, they are, they are getting off of it now. They're not, they're not, they're not hitting the, the buck, the buck bass are. I saw that fish swim away. He didn't stay. He got it. Go. <sighs> Lee, I think that was, I don't think that was the same fish. I saw that fish swim off. I saw that fish swim away. Okay, uh, somebody wants to know why you swap from bait caster to spinning reel. Well, I'm using a I'm using a lighter line. I can actually throw that worm, and I probably will rig it up that way. I can throw it on a bait caster uh, with a with a seven foot two inch FX custom rod that's designed for shaky heads with a bait with a bait caster. But I'm I rigged it on a, on a spinning rod because it's because it's a little more versatile if you have to skip it or or stuff like that and, and plus you got lighter line and and uh, usually I'll go to 
a bell type reel, but uh, personally, I wish I never had to pick one up. Uh, I throw a drop shot. I got a drop shot rigged up right now on that on that shaky head rod that I'm sure I'll end up using. Okay, for people that's just joining in with us, uh, tell us tell us again where we are and why we're here. Okay, we are in South Mississippi. We are on a we are on a uh, private lake, actually a small lake, and the reason being is. We were going to do this on a lake called Lake Bogoma, which is right outside my hometown in Laurel, Mississippi. But the state, because of the coronavirus, has closed all the boat ramps. The lake's closed to fishing. So, which is, which to my understanding is, it's all of the state lakes are, state ramps and stuff. So, so we had to scramble. We had this thing scheduled. We had to scramble to uh, find us a place to do this thing. And and we ended up here, which is which is pretty neat. We're getting some pretty exciting top water bites. It's not as challenging as a as a bigger lake, but it's can still learn how to work baits and plus you're mapping the lake. And, yeah, you. and I'm mapping I'm going along and mapping the lake for the for the owner as we go. And uh, it's just a you know, just a fun deal. We're just fishing, you know, we're we're trying to Give the major league fishing fans something to something to watch uh, while all this Corona stuff's going on. And hopefully, we'll be back fishing soon. But it's pretty big, you know. I, I don't know how many of y'all been tuning in to all these guys fishing, but it's it's been pretty awesome seeing these all these big names going and you uh, getting out here and going on their local lakes and stuff and and fishing. You know, it's it's a lot of fun. We got to be able to do something. Okay, I've had several people ask about how you got into uh, tournament fishing and how did you learn how to bass fish? Well, you know what, that's a, that's a good question. The reason, <laughs> the reason I started fishing for bass was when I was a little kid and I had a Zepco 202, I was bluegill fishing and I was reeling a bluegill in and I came by a big old log with my bluegill and a big bass, of course it looked big to me, I don't know how big it was, swam out of there and ate my bluegill. And I thought, Dad gum, I'm fishing for the I'm fishing for the wrong fish. So actually at that time I started rigging bluegill on a uh, on a bobber just like you would a shiner and started catching bass that way, and that's how I got started bass fishing and one unfortunate thing for me was my dad uh, my dad was a big time bowler and he slipped and broke his hip bowling when I was eight or nine years old and he was crippled the rest of his life they didn't have the technology back then they got now and and he uh, he didn't he didn't get to do a whole lot of outdoors things with me now he came to all my Baseball, baseball games, and all that kind of those sports that I played, he was there, definitely there, cheering me on. But uh, there was a man named Charlie Reddick that lived up the street from me, and I was riding by his house one day with a stringer of bass and bluegill on my bicycle, and he met me out there and started talking, and invited me to go fishing, and and that was kind of historic for me because. I fell right in with those, with those people and they, they took me hunting and fishing uh, as I was growing up and I'll never forget it, but he's, he's left this world now, but I still have some communication with his, with his son and daughter, but uh, it, was a, it was an awesome deal. And I, you know, I, I progressed, it just seemed like when I'd go fishing with my friends, I'd catch the most or the biggest and and I did you know it was a it was a form of competition for us but it just stuck to me I mean I just I loved it and when I when Ray Scott when I first heard about Ray Scott starting bass and in the tournament deal I I said I'm on board you know so I I mean I I was not a I didn't come up with very much money like I said my dad was crippled and we struggled financially and so I went to, you know, I went to college and everything. When I got out of college, I, my first goal was to 
stash the money to buy a bass boat and get started. And that's what I did. Let's go back over our uh, giveaway program today, Paul. We are we're at the end of this broadcast. We are going to give away on a drawing about a thousand dollars worth of stuff, not to one person, but to several people. Uh, we're gonna give away reels and and all different kinds of things, baits and stuff. You know, just a bows. I think Bruin's got an awesome crossbow and a and a bow fishing setup. So, uh, but we're gonna. What you need to do is after this broadcast, go to the Bruin Outdoors Facebook page or the Sportsman's Outfitters Facebook page and and like and share and that will enter you into this drawing where we're going to give this stuff away so i'm telling you it's some, definitely something that you want to do it's looking like we might have got out of the we're in some real shallow stuff now that shouldn't matter but you never know wind is really picking up it's out of the east right now. It's supposed to be out of the north. What do you think about electronics these days? Look, is it big, been a big learning curve? The electronics are, you know, I don't know if y'all probably been seeing this live scope, this Garmin live scope. Uh, Garmin's got such great technology right now and, and uh it, it has been a learning curve and the and the younger guys have definitely been been better at it than than i have uh but you gotta you gotta stay on top of it they come out with so much new stuff so quick and uh they've perfected this live scope and i'm sure they'll have a next generation deal that'll be better than this one but i don't know how it can get any better but uh yeah, it's been, you know, it's something that you, that I've had to stay on top of. You know, when I did my, a lot of my damage offshore was, I had to go out there and triangulate and, and search for places that I'd see on a, on a topo map that were really hard to find. But, you know, the neat thing about it was when you found them, you pretty much had them to yourself. Now, with the technology we've got now, uh, you know, you you got to find 20 places to get one because all these guys are so good at it. They they uh, they're going to find them. I mean, you can't expect to. You know, I know we go to places like Gunnersville and Pickwick and Kentucky Lake, and you know, during the offshore time, uh, shoot, you might lap the whole lake trying to get on a spot and not get on one. You know, it's just that's just the way it is, but because of the electronics. But all the technologies just come so far. You know, like I was saying earlier about the power poles. I mean, you know, who would have thought? And then, and then these trolling motors being able to hold you on, on position out of in deep water, and in shallow water too, but, you know, being able to hold you and keep you in place. The first time I used one of these type trolling motors was on Lake Cherokee. Uh, when we went there several years back and and uh, it it amazed me the way the wind was blowing and I could hit that lock and and uh, uh, stay on my spot I could go back there and cull and everything else and walk up there and just pitch right out and I'm still sitting right exactly where the where those smallmouth were schooled up so it it's been a it, it's been a great great deal I mean it's going it's going it's just going to keep getting better you know these companies they got the they got the people and the know-how to, to get it done you know garmin when they when they decided to get involved they got involved you know they're not fooling around now then all these companies aren't but i've been real i have been real impressed with with garmin stuff especially the live scope we ought to get a big one back in here i would think Pretty shallow, but I 
How's our battery doing? I'm sorry? How's our battery doing? On the phone? Yeah. I can't see it with this live screen up. Uh -huh. We'll go till it runs out, but uh, I think we got plenty. Water temperature again is? Water temperature is 73.67. So it cooled off a little back in, back in the shallower water. Just a little bit though. Is that Sportsman Outdoor or Sportsman's Outdoors? Sportsman's Outfitters. Sportsman's Outfitters is the Facebook page. Oh! <laughs> right when you <laughs> walking back, wasn't it? Yep, right when I walked back. Yeah. Ah, he threw it. Dad gum it, Paul. Oh, man, they're in a little ditch right there or something. I'm, just, I'm glad I dropped the power poles when I did. That's a male bass. God, those males are hitting it harder than the females. Man, he wasn't going nowhere, was he? Yeah, can't figure out how to, there we go. <laughs> oh, those fish both hit in the same, that might have been, I don't think it would have been the same fish. I had that other one hooked so good. We'll find out right now. I can see the outline of a little bit of a drop. Uh, what color is that whopper popper? Bone. The whopper plopper is bone. Might have been the same fish, I don't know. Let's see if we can. bit of a drop there. If I any glass more snow, if you got any tips how to keep rust off your hook. Well, you know, a lot of these baits that you use have salt have salt in them, so one thing you want to definitely do is not leave any not leave any uh, lures that have salt injected into them on your hooks when you're not fishing is one definite thing. But, you know, of course, you know, their Plano is making tackle boxes now that that really prevent your your hooks and stuff from rusting. So, uh, you know, they're definitely, that technology's coming along pretty good. Keep all the moisture out. But basically, you know, you gotta keep a little hook file handy and Constantly be tipping the points of your of your lures. Can't believe I can't get them to bite a worm. How often do you reline your reels? Well, it, I reline my reels according to the the kind of line that I'm using. Naturally, if I'm using lighter line, I'll replace it a lot more often. But uh, it, during competition, I usually practice with with. Uh, the same line every day and then the, once the tournament starts I'll I'll put new line on and any any of those rides that I feel like I've used and abused that day I'll 
I'll replace the line again going into competition. But, uh, you know, with braid, now you, shoot, you can, this braid that's on this reel, this bass braid has probably been on it for a year. You know, I don't hardly ever replace braid. So, so uh, you, know, you know, you can turn braid around and just reel it in from, you know, from the opposite way and, and you got fresh new line again. So uh, you don't really have to replace braid very often at all. I use a jig a lot. A jig is one of my favorite baits uh, year round. And I, I usually throw the main two colors I throw are black, blue, and, and green pumpkin. Uh, uh, most of the time, if I'm if I'm around a bluegill bite, I'll I'll throw green pumpkin. Uh, but probably if I had one color they'd only let me use, it would be it would be black blue. And I'll probably end up swimming a jig some today. We already been on an hour. Wow. We're getting to them as quick as we can. I know we're getting a lot of questions and I'm trying to answer them. Uh, you know, if we don't, if, if we don't get to you and you, you can go to my Facebook page, fan page, Paul Elias Fishing, and uh, like and like and share my page, I'd appreciate it anyway, but, uh, but I, you know, you can ask me any question on there and I'll be, uh, I'll try my best to get back to you on it. Okay, once again, if you go, once this thing's over, if you go to the Bruin Outdoors Facebook page or the, or the uh, Sportsman's Outfitters Facebook page and like and share either one of those pages, that will enter you into this drawing to, uh, to win the stuff that we're giving away. Like I said, it's going to be several winners. Not going to be just one winner. So, uh, so that's the way to do it. The two FX rods you've been using today so far, which, which of those two rods have been right in the first place? I am using the seven, uh, six foot nine inch uh, medium extra fast tip uh, FX rod on this on this whopper plopper and I am and I'm and the spinning rod is a seven foot four inch it's the seven foot four inch medium with a fast tip so uh, I said medium heavy earlier and I thought it was medium but uh, but that I've used that thing all around I mean small mouth large mouth the whole works, and, and I've, I've been impressed with that rod. Let me get over here to this little islands in that point. And that's why I figure we're going to run out. I am using a Bruin Elias Legend series. Every time I bring, every time I start talking about this reel, I get a bite. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Elias Legend series, seven point seven three to one gear ratio reel. We have we have four models of this of this reel with different gear ratios. A, a five point three to one for cranking and, and we got a 6.2 to one for all around like square bills and, and, and medium diving plugs and stuff like that. 
and we we got the seven three to one for which I you know basically all around fishing, and we've got an eight one to one for ripping for ripping baits. Throwing that big old thing into the wind. Yes, it is. They are in Dothan, Alabama. The visibility probably is about two feet, foot and a half to two feet. This is a little bit deeper, <coughs> excuse me, this is a little bit deeper water out through here. Oh, that pollen is something else. <clears throat> I'm going to throw my worm a little bit again. Ken wants to know if you always use the steady retrieve on the water plopper plopper. Most of the time I do. I, I'll use a steady retrieve on that whopper plopper. But I, if I'm fishing around clumps of grass and things like that that I feel like I need to slow it down when I come across, come by something, I will. But most of the time, I am, I'm bringing that thing, just bringing it on back to the boat. And, but, you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways to work it. So sometimes you can work it like a, like a devil's horse or, you know, a prop bait. Uh, and, and get bites on it, but I, the majority of the time, I'm I'm just steady, steady bringing it back. That is some kind of old stringy, 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 stringy stuff. Almost like shrimp grass. Hello in Portugal. Got one from Kuwait. Got point North Carolina. Well, it's been a heck of a morning. I mean, we hadn't caught a whole lot, but what we've caught's been some. We've had some decent fish in there. It's always exciting to be able to catch them on top. This time has flown by. I, I didn't expect it to go by that quick. Trustful Alabama. I have no weight on this worm. Actually, what the spring, oh, I got up in some real shallow stuff. The spring is, uh, uh, has got some weight to it. So it, this by, to me, this thing falls just right. But uh, we got a situation here where this grass is making it hard to, a little bit hard to use. everywhere and seen everything there is. <clears throat> These fish act like they hadn't seen them. I 
ask about a thick worm, why not use a thick worm or a square bit? <laughs> well, I'd run into the, excuse me a minute. <coughs> that gum, that pollen is. A lot of pollen. Yep. Uh, a square bill, I'd be in the same situation, but I tell you, a bait I can throw is a man's baby one minus. And it would probably, <coughs> it would probably catch him. It would probably top that stuff just right. This little lure, I came back from a uh, from a bass tournament on Lake Okeechobee. It was at that time. It was a really big. It was a really big event. First, it was first place money was <coughs> about as high as you were seeing in fishing tournaments. And I finished second in the tournament. The fish were in the hydrilla. Ooh. Golly, he smoked that thing. <laughs> Dad, come it. <clears throat> Fish were in the hydrilla, and uh, the hydrilla was up close to the surface. <laughs> God, I don't know what I swallowed, but I swallowed something that's not good. <clears throat> Let's take a break here a minute. <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> Woo. <water>? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. I got it. Sorry about that, but uh, anyway, <clears throat> I needed a bait that would that would run a lot shallower than anything that was out there. <clears throat> and I actually, on my way back from that tournament, <clears throat> like I said, I finished second. Felt like I could have won it if I'd had a, a lure like this. And at the time, man's had the 20 plus, <clears throat> which was the deepest diving crankbait on the market. So I said, <clears throat> we got the deepest diving crankbait on the market. Why don't we go? Why don't we build the shallowest diving crankbait on the market? And so that's kind of how this this thing got started. And it's been a heck of a it's been a heck of a lure. It's it's caught a lot of fish, won a lot of tournaments. <clears throat> See, I'm I'm throwing that thing up in about a foot and a half of water, and it's it's. It's topping that moss pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I just I got got around that dock. I guess I don't know what it was, but man, that pollen got to me. Looks like we need to get one more top water bite. But I, I'm gonna tell, I'm telling everybody, y'all really, y'all need to go to the man's website and check that new Springer worm out. I know I hadn't caught anything on it, but it's, I'm kind of limited to <clears throat> to what I can fish here with all this moss because obviously the fish are. Or in the shallow water, uh, but you you want to check that thing out because it it is an awesome awesome bait. I've been totally impressed with it. You can watch a video that shows you uh, how that thing how the action on the bait, and you'll be really impressed with it.
remember now when we, we looked, our battery is liable to go dead here. Hopefully we gave y'all some good, we had some good quality audio in this wind. But in order to do that, we couldn't, uh, I had two following that thing. We couldn't uh, charge the phone battery. We didn't think about that. Right. Right. So I'm sure there's a way around that, which we'll know for next time. But but if we get cut off, if the battery goes dead or whatever, you know, remember once again. Go. Oh, there he is. One minus. Go to the uh, Brewing Outdoors Facebook page or the. Oh, he swallowed that thing. <laughs> I wish I could weigh in to all the tournaments what I've caught on that little baby one minus. But uh, go to the Sportsman Outfitters Facebook page, like and share one one of the pages, and that will enter you into the drawing. Oh, I broke a hook. Golly, he swallowed that thing. Fish may have to go in the ice chest. Yep. Ain't no way around it. Uh, he's not bleeding. Uh, but, you know, <coughs> enter the drawing. We're going to give all this stuff away. And when are we going to let them know who won? I think we're going to draw winners tomorrow morning. And, uh, you know, just tell them one more time the sportsman's in <laughs> Brewing Outdoors. Ooh, look at him tracking that thing. <laughs> Brewing Outdoors Facebook page. See, that usually means you're throwing the wrong color, but I ain't, I ain't really got time to change. Of course, some way that's, that other one swallowed it, it usually tells you you're throwing the right color. So, see, that might have been a spawner or something following it. Uh, Brewing Outdoors Facebook page, Sportsman's Outfitters Facebook page. Like and share. Like and share, and you will be entered into the drawing. All right, we we'll probably need to wrap this up and conclude this. Uh, <coughs> How much battery you got left? I can't tell. You can't tell. I just keep getting warnings every now and then because I'm down to 5% or whatever. Go ahead and get back west. <coughs> I'll cough on you. <coughs> Dad, come it. Yeah. Thank all y'all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. We've had a really good time. There's a lot of exciting top water stuff, uh, top water action, but uh, enter our drawing. Brewing Outdoors Facebook page, Sportsman's Outfitters Facebook page, and hopefully you'll be a winner. Thank you.